community that comes out to celebrate arts and hopefully get these authors and composers one step closer to making money on their art. Woo! Yay, Yay right. money! <laughs> Uh, and speaking of making money, any donations that you make tonight get split between the cast and crew and go to support further Wellspring Productions. Um, our mission is to create a grassroots arts community that support each other and make just more art. And our focus is on bringing diverse stories and untold experiences to stage, moving over and making space on our shared platform uh, to make sure that everyone in our community can hear all of these wonderful stories. So thank you for supporting that mission. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping tips. This house is wonderful and it is historic and we ask that you not go upstairs if you need to enter the house. There is a restroom inside. There's also a porta potty um, just over there. The door to this house is just on the other side of the veranda right here on the side. That direction. Um, and use it gently. And please don't flush anything that you shouldn't because it's <laughs> under the <laughs> And if you didn't get a program, there are QR codes on the banisters that you can see our program. You can also just go to wellspringtheater.org and look at the program there. Um, and of course, you can make a donation with your credit card that way as well. And without any further ado, I'm going to introduce the originator of the Colorado New Musical Festival, Kelly Bishop Graham, who has been the fearless music director, who is amazing and has brought this amazing, amazing, talented cast um, really to a lovely place to present these things with a shockingly small amount of rehearsal time. I'm so impressed every time I hear you guys sing that it just keeps getting better and better. So enjoy the show. Hi. Double checking. Did we start the camera? Yes. You all rock. Thank you. Because I got up here and was like, oh no, did it happen? Um, Hi there, and welcome to the 2022 Colorado Musical Festival. So happy to have you here to celebrate and listen to new musical works in progress. Uh, we were blessed with a number of wonderful authors and composers who submitted works for this year, as well as the small but mighty crew that we've already loved on, but we can love on them some more. Um, it did take quite a bit of a lift to make this happen in a short amount of time, so thank you to them again. Um, before we get started, uh, we first like to acknowledge the original stewards of this land upon which we gather today, uh, that of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, Ute, and Sioux Nations. Uh, we are so excited to continue bringing new musical works about and by diverse voices to life as staged readings. This festival was born because all over Denver you can see staged readings of straight plays, but nowhere was there a home for new musicals. What we saw were authors and composers putting up fully staged productions on their own dime or doing readings in their living rooms. Not having a space like this meant that those who could get their stories out were limited to those with resources, networks, and money. Our goal with this festival is to give space for voices that aren't typically represented. Anyone can can submit work in any state and we provide feedback and select as many works as possible to be featured in this festival. Um, we give priority to authors and stories from underrepresented groups as well as priority to Colorado authors. In the past three years we have been able to feature works by and about a woman with cerebral palsy, various LGBTQ plus stories of joy, finding oneself and overcoming trauma, as well as meaningful works by and about women, Latinx, and Black, black communities. Uh, we are always looking for ways to widen and deepen our work, Mary spoke a little bit about that, and to include as many different people as we can. If this message resonates with you, join us, share us, encourage around you, encourage those around you to tell your story, tell their stories, because they matter. Um, this fe festival is empowered by incredible and dedicated volunteers, as well as generous donations from folks like you. This performance is free and open to the public. We're asking you to bring your generosity, any amount, large or small. It's, of course, welcome uh, to support these incredible performers you are about to see. Um, this festival is a program of Wellspring, which is the adult programming wheel of Backstory Theater. Visit wellspringtheater.org for more information on tonight's lineup, ways to donate and support us, as well as learn more about all the works featured this year. Um, you can also click through and visit CEO New Musical Fest Dot com, um, where we invite you to explore all the works we featured in 2020 and 2021. Um, it's a great place to shop for a show that isn't necessarily what you see every day, which is pretty cool. Um, if you hear a small child, he's mine. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> he's cute. His name's Nathan. You can say hi. Uh, as we get into the performances tonight, I want to issue you an invitation, a challenge, if you will, to put yourself in a director or maybe a producer's shoes. As you watch each performance tonight embodied by these talented actors behind me, I want you to imagine all of the casting possibilities not represented here. Imagine a rainbow of performers in every sense of the word. Imagine the possibilities for representing stories and experiences that matter to you and to those who don't get their stories told on stage. This summer, our acting community was spread quite thin and we are incredibly thankful to the folks who made 
this commitment to telling these stories. Even if we are more homogenous in appearance than we as a festival aspire to be or call upon our theater community to be, um, we're still happy to be here and encourage you to, to think, think about what those possibilities are. Um, also, if you're not familiar with IDEA stages, um, I would encourage you to check out the work they are doing to combat um, white American theater and diversify the stories we tell on our stages. All right, let's get into it. We have Ellipses by David Kwong Fong. This avant-garde universal new musical is about coming of age on a galactic scale. When their sibling galaxies run away from home in the wake of the Big Bang, young 12 millennium old Milky Way, played by Lucia Graves, is left on their own. While their older siblings are mature enough to make their own orbits, Milky Way has to scramble to find themselves without help. The scene we are featuring is about Milky Way missing their siblings and hating their changing body, so they dream up some familiar ima ima so they dream up some familiar imaginary friends, the celestial bodies of our solar system. The rest of the musical follows not just Milky Way, but their five galactic siblings, particularly the eldest, the galaxy SPT0615-JD, or JD for short, mm -hmm. the singularity who created them, and the family dog, Gravity, with their pack of feral tidal forces. The family splits apart and comes together multiple times. In an effort to make the ineffable palatable, this musical tracks the universe on its path from the beginning to the end of time. Scene nine, the fabric of space-time. Milky Way drifts in. Oh, are we saying who we are? I see what you're asking now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so in this, we have the whole solar system, and I, they're just going to introduce themselves so you know who they are going into it. I, I'm so sorry. That's what you were asking. <laughs> um, so let's just go down the line. Um, I'm playing Saturn in this scene. We lost an actor. I'm playing Earth and Jupiter. I am the sun. I'm, I'm Milky Way. I am Mercury. I'm Uranus. I am Oort Cloud. <laughs> Google oh. it. <laughs> what would oh. the author like to come up and explain the Oort Cloud? <laughs> okay. Take two. Scene nine, the fabric of space-time. Milky Way drifts in. They hear the solar system in their head. My tummy hurts. Need crunch time. Milky Way for forgotten. Imaginary friends. We're your planetary friends. I'm not. No, no one, one is asking you, you Earth. <laughs> Being forgotten isn't so bad. I wish I was. No matter what I do, I'm blamed for everything. Everyone retrogrades me. I'm Mercury. You may be barred, but barred spiral galaxies are at large. You must certainly have a massive orbit, says the gas giant with dozens of Jovian moons. Go play with your ring, Saturn. Jupiter is just jealous of mine. Got a ring to spare Uranus? Two, in fact. You, you are, are a two! two. <laughs> Planets, what is with the radio outburst? Son, my gas giant siblings are making me the butt of the joke. Always treating me like crap. You have a son? No, son is our mama. We're sons of sun. Sons can have sons? Yes, child. It's the natural order of things. When you get older, you'll have a cluster of stars of your own. You should know better. What, are you 12 eternities old? Earth, we do not discuss galactic formation in this solar household. It's theoretical heresy. <laughs> I'm too close to the sun that it gets pretty heated. But I don't get fevers like Venus. Earth and you may be dense, but you are distant from your siblings. That You're not such a drag. I need to find JD. Mercury, don't degrade yourself. I wish life retrogrades a million years. Oh yeah, time is dilated for you galaxies. Let this planet convert it. The last you were in your family's orbit was 13.81 billion years ago. The year your eldest elliptical sibling ripped apart your family. <laughs> Do you hate being an oval? I didn't raise you, Earth, to be a jerk to other shapes and insult their curves. <laughs> Sun, as a result of stars like you, I'm a proud sphere. Ugh, Milky Way. Ugh. Waves. 
Wrinkles. <laughs> Don't take Earth's bullying. That rocky planet may be well-rounded, but you're a person all around. What with your waves and wrinkles, imperfect as they are, light or cloud, they do not blame my retrograde for their imperfections. I may be out of the system, but I have a strong hold on it, an influence that's a hundred thousand astronomical units wide. You are 6.685 billion. I've heard enough comet tales. It's always good to see you around, Milky Way. You got a Thidal's tale to share with us? Cluster, solar system. Gravity, well, there I'd something. <laughs> Milky Way warp themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I hate myself. All the use in crying. Let it out. Milk of celestial kindness, you show a huge quality. Not your curves, figures. Your special galaxy, you hold something dear that no one else has. Well, your alienating siblings probably do, but they won't show it. Tell me. You hold personhood. Persons with warping voices, growing waves of hair and wrinkly skin. There is a person in you, Milky Way. There are people in me. Cut, Cut your, your hubris, hubris Earth. Earth. We like all things unearthly about you. You carry our weight, trips, our history, culture, our pride, secrets, our music, dances. Embody it. You must first own yours. <laughs> Milky ways on their own, all alone, know that for us at home, nor the young, we wait forward through warps, waves, and wrinkles. satellites. I gravitate my feelings. You ellipse. Go ahead and have a taste of the local group while you're at it. Cook Sagittarius said three megaparsecs. Um, parsecs is a unit of distance, not I time. am parsecs away from losing it. It's the nature of galaxies. They'll eat everything. Like us gas giants. We are persons too, after all. They are beyond a kid. Like you said, Orc Cloud, Milky Way has always been a person. And they have reached a new stage in personhood. I now have a warmth, waves, and wrinkles. I live with it. Warmth, waves, and wrinkles. I love myself.
lovely rest of your evening. Chat with the authors, chat with each other, um, and enjoy this beautiful space. Thank you. Jess, you're fantastic and we appreciate you. Yeah.